Hey guys, it's Deborah. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be making a junk journal with these beautiful papers which are called Georgia Blue. They're from Prima and they're an A4 sized paper pad and I've got some other bits and pieces that I'm going to be using as well. So in this paper pad there are 30 sheets and you get five sheets of six different designs and you can see that they're absolutely beautiful. I'm not usually a blue person, but I just picked this up and I thought it was gorgeous. Oops, sorry, I just bumped the camera a little bit. This one here has really good because you can make tags and things out of it, and that's what I've done. And also this one here, I really like that one. And the backs of them are just as nice as the front of them. I've already cut some of these pages and I've cut them to a length of 10 inches and then used the scoreboard to fold them in half. And I've got a piece here that I've cut into a square and I'm going to make an envelope out of this one. I want to make sure that I get that image on the actual flap of the envelope. And I'm just finishing up trimming the excess away from my envelope. And here it is here with the flap on the top so that looks really pretty. And I don't have to put anything on the inside because this is double sided paper. Now I'm just checking where I might put this and that's going to fit fine there. So I've got these folded pages and I'm going to add in these children's dictionary pages. So I've just really folded them in half. They're um, not quite as big as the papers I've got. This piece here is from an Australiana book so I'm just working out whether or not I want to include that and wishing that I hadn't folded it before I actually tested it against the size of my paper. So I'm going to cut it off and just use the top half of it in the book. I've got this other craft envelope and I've just used a piece of paper to cover the flap and put some book page inside. And now I've fussy cut the bicycle out of the paper and I'm inking the edges of it. You can actually buy the pack that goes with this of the elements in it that is already fussy cut. I didn't buy that so I've just fussy cut the bike myself. And if you just bend the paper a little bit you'll get your ink into all those little tiny spots. And I think I'm going to stick this on the front of the envelope but I also wanted to add in a Tim Holtz doll. I've got one here that I had in mind but when I worked it out I realised that I wanted his hand to sit on top of the bicycle and it actually won't fit. So in the end, I changed my mind and I decided to put him in the book. I'm just gluing him into the book. I'm just using some strong glue because uh, the little doll is quite thick. And then I'm going to position the bicycle so that his hand is sitting on top. I just have to play around a little bit and poke it under there and then get it stuck in. I mean it's not probably going to move anyway. This is strong glue and I've got it quite well down now. And then I know that the wheel of the bike and some of the flowers will be on the other page. So I'm just folding it over onto my ruler so I get that crease and making sure that that's well stuck down. I'm not the neatest person with glue, I must say. I do get a bit messy. Here's the envelope that I made earlier, and I want that in there. So I'm going to stick a bit of double-sided tape onto the envelope so that I can put it down in the book. I think that this will be a nice place to put some journaling in. I'll probably find something that will end up going in there. I decided to add some washi tape to the envelope because it will be sort of you know flipping in and out and I wanted to make sure that it was super strong and that it wasn't actually going to uh, come apart at any stage so I'm just trimming off that washi now making it uh, fit neatly on the page You can see also that I've put a bingo card inside the envelope. So that's uh, one of my pages that is done now. I'm not quite happy with that. Putting a bit of matching washi on the other side of the page just to tie it in. It's really just about repetition. It, I think when you repeat stuff, it makes the 
pages flow a bit better and it makes them look um, more cohesive. On the front of this, I'm going to put um, a faux glassine envelope. This is just a bit of baking paper and I don't want to cover up the pretty pattern paper. That's why I decided to do this. So I've just gotten some of this from the kitchen. Easy to do, folded in half put some double-sided tape down so that it creates a pocket and then uh, fold the bottom up and you've got yourself a nice faux glassine envelope and you can still see the pretty pattern paper that's coming in from the other side. I've put down my faux glassine envelope and I found something to put in it and now I'm just going to grab my stash. This is my stash of Tim Holtz stuff. And just looking for something and I couldn't find anything that was long enough but what I found was this piece of paper when I cut the pages down so that they were 10 inches I have a little bit left over because obviously they're an A4 which makes them about 11 and a half inches or something long so I've cut the um, the strip off it and inked the upsides of it and I'm just inking the the pre-made ephemera as well that I've got and I'm going to put both of those into that envelope that I've just made and that's a nice little addition it sticks up a bit so it creates a bit of a tab at the top and it's also pale so you'll be able to pull it out and write on it as well on to the next page now and I'm using a different sheet from the Prima pack I want something to put on this page and these are the bits that I've cut out from that um, pattern page that I showed you before. I'm just determining if this is what I want on this page. I'm not sure that I'm happy with it. I think it's a little bit too big. I think that was the problem that I had. So I've got a smaller piece. It's from the same sheet of paper that's in the paper pad and I'm going to put it up here and I'm just going to find a little paper clip. So this is a tiny little Tim Holtz paper clip only just got these recently and it's just adorable and I'm just going to paper clip that on so you'll be able to take it off and also put other things on there as well you can see I've just put something else on there to show you it's quite cute I'm still on this same piece and I want to put this craft envelope that I showed you before that I decorated I'm going to put down a piece of washi tape across the fold Again, this is just for strength and stability more than anything else. It does create a decorative item as well, but it's really about the fact that this is being folded and will be open and shut a lot. So I want to make sure that it's nice and strong. So I'm just using double-sided tape because that's what I like to use and making sure that I put plenty on, again, for strength and stability so that when it's being flipped open and back and forth it won't actually fall off the book at all and then I'm just putting it onto the page so that you've got the pattern paper on the paler paper and then the craft envelope inside and then I'll have to find something to stick in there then I decided that the envelope itself needed something so I've got a bit of this Tim Holtz ephemera and it's just a little label and I'm sticking that on the top and I think that it just needs something else as well. Then I thought I'd try this piece of ephemera which is from the botanicals but it didn't work and you can see I'm hunting through my stuff here looking for something that might work. I think you just sometimes have to try a few things and then I came up with this little frame. So this again is just one of the Tim Holtz ephemera and I had this little picture out on the table of these guys um i don't know i think they're just it's an old vintage photo it was in the ephemera pack so i've decided that i'm going to stick that down and use the souvenir view um little um window as a decorative element around that photo and that might create quite a nice little collage on this envelope again i'm just inking the edges because i'm a bit obsessed with inking edges always find that I have to ink them. I often use my um, blending foam to ink edges but I found this little old ink pad the other day and I had a couple of them so in the interest of using my stash I decided that I would start using that first 
and use it up before I went back to using what I normally use, which is my Distress Ink and Blending Foam. So you won't be able to pull this photo out, but that's fine. It's these old guys exploring. I can't even remember where it came from. But I'm just going to put that on the outside of the envelope again to create some interest. I think it's good to have different things when you're looking through your junk journal. And you um, can see I'm just hunting around for some more stuff to put on the other side. I think I found this piece of botanical and it was actually bent. So I ended up cutting off the stem of it so that I could just put the top part of it on because it just, um, I didn't like it anyway because it was all bent. I must try and look after my stuff a bit better but when I'm hunting through things, sometimes things get bent. I'm just working out which way it goes because having taken it off its stem, I wasn't sure but it looked pretty good that way so that's what I ended up deciding that I would do. And now I've got an envelope on this page, all ready to go. Here's the next page, again a piece of paper from the paper pad. And I need to work out what to do with this. So I've just pulled a few of those um, things that I cut out before. They're just little squares. And I'm thinking I'm going to make some little tuck spots with these. And I'm just testing out there so I can see that they're... Um, quite good size for a tuck spot. I'm putting double sided tape just down on two sides of the piece of paper. This Prima paper is quite thick and luscious so it's very good for tuck spots and things. It's maybe not so good for the actual pages because it has turned out to be quite a thick junk journal. In the end I couldn't find anything that would fit with the page being folded so I decided to make my own and I've got this index card. It's just a four by six index card. And I thought that would be good to actually tuck in to that spot. But first of all, I wanted to cover one side of it because I wanted to look a bit special. So I pulled out some washi tape and I'm just going to cover it in some paper. I've also got this in a blue. So I might actually do both of them. I'm just not sure yet. This is a page from an old book. And I've just found this really pretty image, which is all in these icy blues. It's actually trees covered in snow. And that's what I'm going to use to cover one side of this index card. Okay, so I'm positioning the index card onto the book page just with double-sided tape. Now I'm going to cut it down. I'm just using a steel ruler and a craft knife. You could use a um, cutting, you know, 12 by 12 inch cutter or whatever cutter you've got. I prefer using a steel ruler and a craft knife. It's just something that I've picked up over the years and I can use it quite well without cutting myself or things that I don't need to cut. I'm just trimming the corners away so that I don't get a lot of bulk in the corners. And now I'm just going to stick it down. And I decided when I stuck it down that I was going to use some washi tape just to make it a bit prettier. So I've got my washi tape and I'm just going to use that to stick the whole thing down. This is one of the thinner washi tapes that I've got. I do have them in all shapes and sizes and patterns, but this is a, a Tim Holtz one, design tape, but washi tape, I think is the more common name for it. So I'm just going to use that so that I can use one side of this for a journaling spot. And the other side's got that nice picture of the trees with the snow. And I could always stick something on the other side of it. So I could stick a photo or another journaling spot or lots of other things on it just really um, up to you what you'd want to put on there but I just thought that would be a nice way firstly to use up my book pages from the different books that I have and also to use the index cards and you can see that it's actually a perfect size for this particular envelope. Then I found these old index tabs that I had for my index cards they were in the box as well and they're kind of plasticky so I thought well why not try and cover one of those as well and then I could stick it in the envelope as well 
So I've got this paper which was left over when I created the tag, the flap for the envelope, and I'm just going to um, cut around it. So I'm going to start by sticking the index um, divider down to the paper and then just trimming around it and finishing up the edges with some washi. You can see here that I ended up putting an index card on the other side as well so that I've got another journaling spot. So I'm really just using the plastic divider as a base and as a sizing template more than anything. And then I just decided to go crazy with the index cards and do another one. So I've got some of the child's dictionary and I've just trimmed that down or torn it down using my steel ruler. And now I'm going to put two of them back to back. The reason that I did this was because of the weight. One just felt a little bit flimsy because the dictionary page itself isn't very strong, um, isn't very thick. So that's why I used two index cards. I've got plenty of them. I've had them forever. After I did that, I actually decided that I would sew it. So I took it to the machine and ran some stitches around the edge. I purposely ran them you know, back and forth and I think that that's, um, that's looking quite nice now and it's creating a nice little spot to journal and I'm just inking the edges up of it and then I'm going to put it into this tuck spot. I was just deciding whether anything else should go on there but in the end I decided that I liked it just how it was. Then I got the page and I actually sewed around the edge of the page and I sewed that little tuck spot onto the side of it. And now I'm just taking some pages out of this book. I'm just using my craft knife to cut them down so that they don't wrinkle. I think sometimes when you take pages out of a book, if you just pull them out, you'll get a lot of wrinkles. So I tend to use a knife to cut them down and it's, not quite the right size but I'm going to make a pocket out of this so I'm starting by folding it over so that my edges are nice and I have that nice edge at the top so that things don't get caught on it and it's thick enough to put things in and out and now I've just taken it to the sewing machine I've stitched the edges just using a zigzag stitch and also I've put a little bit of lace across the top of it just for something that's a little bit different. So I'm just going to trim off that excess lace now and some of those threads that are hanging around. So this is just a bit of lace that um, has been dyed in the green colour and I've got lots of it. I wasn't going to use it because it's special but I'm telling myself I have to use things. Special or not, I need to use them. And I'm going to trim this up with some washi tape as well. Because the back will be stuck in, I don't um, worry about what the back of the particular thing looks like. But I think that um, these are easy to make, these little book page pockets. I'm just looking for somewhere to put it now. So I'm going to stick it down on here just with a bit of double sided tape. I think it'll look quite sweet on this page. Again, making sure that I have plenty of double-sided tape on the back of it so that it retains its, um, you know, its strength and it's stuck well to the page. And then I can tuck something in there like this typewriter piece that I've got. It's white on the back. So it would be good for journaling on as well. The next thing I got was a piece of that leftover stuff again. It's just got the top part there and I'm just going to trim it down again using my ruler and my knife. And I thought about creating this little flap thing I like to do that because I like to have interest in my junk journal. I don't want to open the pages and see everything the same. So I'm just inking the edges again and then I'm going to use some washi tape and stick it in. So I'm just sticking it just off the centre of the book and I'm going to stick it down on both sides so that um, it will stay in place.
so now I've got like this little extra page if you will or a little flap or something I don't know what you call it and I want to put something on it so I was thinking about getting one of my paper dolls and putting on it I decided on this chap I've got a couple of him so I'm gonna hang him over the edge of this flap I could put him directly onto the flap this is just for visual interest that I decided to hang him over the edge of the page I actually was going to put another one of him on the other side but of course silly me oh, I realized that they're actually not a mirror image of each other I know I'm a bit slow on the uptake some days but I got there in the end so I just put him down directly um, hanging over the edge of the flap just using glue I didn't like how he looked with his whiteness just hanging out there so I got some washi tape out and I just put strips down I could have put a wider washi tape that might have been more sensible but again didn't think of that at the time did I so I'm putting down some washi tape just to cover the back of him and including his foot and just put a little bit on his foot there and now I'm going to just cut round that so that the back of him is covered in the washi tape now this is my next page and I'm using a bit of that leftover um, trim piece again and I'm just wondering what to do with it whether I'll make a belly band which I decided to do so I've just cut it down and I have folded the ends over and I'm putting it on the page so that I've got a bit of a belly band and I'll be able to put something in there that's easy to do I'm just putting some glue down on it and sticking it on I could have used double-sided tape for it as well I just happened to have the glue out at the time and you'll see that something can slide in there it's quite big so I'm actually going to put something a bit thicker in there I created a little book to go in there just with a piece of paper of the uh, pattern paper and some watercolor paper and I've just sewn it through the machine down the center just with a straight stitch and that fits in there really well and that gives you a little uh, journaling spot there, a little hidden journal, journaling spot in the belly band. I created another tuck spot just by stitching down a piece of the pattern cardstock on the left hand side. And you can see I've just um, used my machine to run some stitching around for interest and also to hold that. And at the same time, when I put that in, I just folded another piece of paper to make a little tab for that page. I'm just trimming up some of these leftover threads. You don't have to do that. You could, of course, leave them. And you can see that I've um, got quite a few pages in my junk journal now, and it's looking quite delicious. I could finish it there, but I think I will actually go on and make some more pages for it. So now I'm just going to run through this I'll probably um, show you the finished article in a different video and I'm going to show you what I've got so there's a little tuck spot there I'll put that um, one of those index cards in I've got another one at the top there with the paper clip this beautiful paper I'm just switching it around so that I don't have too much repetition of the pages so I've got this glassine faux glassine envelope that I made on this page and then the man with his bicycle and a bit of washi tape got the little flip piece in the center and then I've got another piece um, that I've sewn around just again for interest stitched all the way around that page and also to catch that little tuck spot as I was going through I've put some ephemera and stuff into that pocket I've got my envelope that I made with the bingo card in it and then the next envelope with the couple of um, pieces of journaling in there and then my little book with the belly band so all in all I think that's uh, quite a good day's work this is Deborah thanks for joining me I hope that you'll come back and visit another time